We have recently added two features to our PLS CAD Lite program to allow for some graphical manipulation that should make modeling of existing infrastructure a little more intuitive. The first tool to look at allows you to graphically move the span end attachment. But to understand how to use this tool, let's review some basic assumptions from our software. Wire sections in PLS CAD Lite are typically defined from a structure attachment point and they radiate outwards. The span geometry is typically defined by specifying three values. These are the horizontal projection, the vertical projection, which defines any elevation changes. Here, a positive value means the next structure is higher up, and a negative value means it is lower down relative to the structure that you're modeling. The Y direction is defined based on the azimuth that you specify. When looking at a structure, our programs assume that the structure's transverse axis is on the 0 to 180 degree azimuth line. This means that for a tangent structure, a head spans are pointed towards the 270 degree direction and back spans are towards the 90 degree direction. If there is a line deviation angle at the structure, half of the deviation angle is on the head span and half is on the back span. This ensures that the transverse axis remains on that 0 to 180 degree line. Now this new tool means that you're no longer only limited to editing the span length or direction in a tabular format. Let's see how this works on an existing light model. Since this is an existing model, the spans have already been defined. But to see what has been specified, we can go to the menu command line setup. This opens the model setup dialog. And here is where we would typically build out our PLS CAD light project. Note that each span of wire radiating off of the structure appears as a row in this table. Until now, any changes to the span's projection and direction had to be made here in this table. However, this new command changes that. To use this new tool, we can access it in one of two ways. The simplest way is through the context sensitive entity command, which you access by clicking on any of the wires, or you can go to the menu command line move span end attachment point. Once active, a selection dialog opens and you'll notice that the cursor begins to snap to the span ends as you move around on the screen. This is a click, drag and release action. There are four modes that you can use to move your span end attachments and you can use shortcut keys to hop between the different modes. Let's look at the horizontal movement firstly. This is going to lock the movement on that horizontal plane. And as you click and drag the span end around, you'll notice in the status bar and in the dialog, the span length is listed to allow you to get close to the value that you want to use. If you want to use a more controlled movement, you can use the snap settings and specify an increment that you want to update your span length as you move your mouse around. The vertical mode is similar, but obviously only allows movement in the vertical plane. The freehand mode again is very similar and will combine both the horizontal and vertical planes. One other helpful snap setting option that we have here is the ability to snap to other span endpoints. This is really useful. It lets you apply complicated changes to one of the wires and then to use that new wire endpoint to adjust your other wires accordingly. It can help with rapid model buildup or when you've got lots of wires on your on your project. Or you can undo changes pretty quickly as well. Here I will get this wire back to its original starting position pretty easily using this tool. The final mode that you can move wires around is the azimuth adjustment. This needs to be done in a 3D or plan view and cannot be used in the profile view. This mode 
updates the wire's orientation but leaves the other parameters unchanged. The second new capability has to do more with orienting your model when you plan on exporting or geolocating your structure. By using this tool, you can ensure that your structure model matches its real-world orientation whilst keeping the local definition of the ahead and back spans intact. This orientation is specified manually if you go back to the model setup dialog, but this new tool allows you to graphically rotate your structure's transverse axis bearing angle. To use this tool, again there's two ways to do it. You can access the context sensitive entity info menu by clicking on the structure in the 3D view or selecting the structures rotate structure command. This is a click, rotate and release tool. And as you rotate your mouse around, you'll see bright green overview shows you a preview of the orientation you are selecting. If you want a little bit more accuracy, you can use the increment tool here to get this dialed in as you need it. Let's look at another example. This is a terminal pole just outside a substation. Let us try and get the wires to match the actual tile positions. First thing to note is that this structure is actually on a small line deviation of about 16 degrees. We can account for this by using the azimuth movement mode on both our back and ahead spans, best done in the 3D view. Also note that the ahead span rolls from a vertical configuration on the terminal pole to a horizontal configuration on the substation gantry. To achieve this, we're going to use a combination of azimuth and vertical projection adjustments to get these wires in the right position. The final adjustment that we need to make is to ensure that the structure's orientation is correct, so we rotate the structure to match its real-world position. After this, we have a correctly placed structure that pretty closely represents the field condition, and that was done without us needing to enter much data manually. We hope that these features make working in PLS CAD Lite even easier than it already was, and that they make your project workflows more efficient. For more information about our software, including additional videos and technical notes, please visit our website at www.powerlinesystems.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, or any other information, please send us an email using the addresses on the screen. Thank you for watching and for your interest in PLS software, the industry standard for overhead line design.